Hi, George. Hi, Gloria. Welcome, everybody. <laughs> George Pearson's back, Pastor George, and he's here some more prosperity stuff. Boy, is it good. What day in prosperity are we on? Of all the teachings that we've done so far, this is day 126. 126. Congratulations. Amen. We've been, we've been doing prosperity now for three years together. That's amazing. I want some testimonies from the people. We need some testimonies. Amen. We need to know. Well, Glory, we've had over 250,000 of our outlines downloaded Praise since the time God. that we began this. Wow. And the Lord just really put it on my heart, Gloria, that I, we needed to capture all these thoughts on paper and then make them available to you. Mm -hmm. So even these notes that we're talking about these two weeks, we're talking about how to believe God for a house. Hey. And all of the daily notes, the daily sermons that we're preaching, all of the scriptures, uh, all of the gloriasms that we <laughs> <Gloriasms. laughs> that come up with here, those are all available to you. Just go to kcm.org. Look for the picture of Glory and Me, click onto it, and it'll take you over to where you can download the, load the notes. And then also, Gloria, they can go on after this uh, broadcast today, they can go to kcm.org. Terry and I have taped a very special internet edition of the Believer's Voice of Victory. Good. We give our testimony about how God helped us mm -hmm. to first of all get debt free and then to, to get the house, receive the house that we're living in right now. Praise God. So Boy, you'll, hear, you'll hear this is a double dose because um, one of the scriptures that we're going to be reading today talks about every wise woman builds her house. Oh, I know that scripture. Yeah, you know that one very mm -hmm. well. So we'll be talking about that. So go on over to kcm.org after this is over and there's some great things that are waiting for you. Gloria, today we are... <clears throat> and, and really, it's important that they go back and listen to what yeah. we talked about last week because we talked about your testimony, how you and Kenneth believe for a house, the different things that the Lord spoke to you, the revelations that God gave you, mm -hmm. how, how you did this. So that was all, all last week. And Gloria, I have to tell you this. This was something that <clears throat> Carol Hill, who works here with us in the studio, discovered uh, we were talking about that house, Green River Courthouse, that yeah. you moved into, the testimony about mm -hmm. that. God got you into that house. A after we were taping last week, Carol came over to me and she showed me on her iPad a, a picture or a map of where gr the Green River Courthouse is. And <clears throat> right above it, because you could see printed there, Green River Court, right above it, it says, um, this is the truth, Gloria, it says the Garden of Eden. Really? When you look so out there's of, a park or there something is a it? section of town. <laughs> when you looked out your window, and I remember that house, yeah, you looked out the window, you could see. All the see, way to downtown. <clears throat> there was like a valley there, and then you could see downtown. Yeah. That section there between your house and downtown, it says on the map, the Garden of Eden. Isn't that funny? And when, when she showed that to me, my heart just jumped on the inside. Sorry, guys, I just punched my mic. That, <laughs> my, my heart just jumped because that was God's desire for Adam That's in the Garden right. of Eden. That he Then the word Eden means house of pleasure. Praise God. Isn't that wonderful? Yes, yes, yes. So yes. you are actually looking out your window at the Garden of Eden. <laughs> Praise God. Beautiful. I remember what it looked like. It was all green between it there and downtown. It was very nice. Then you saw the skyline of downtown. That's neat, George. So it is the will of God for you to have a debt-free, beautiful Garden of Eden home of your own. If you want it. If you want it. We won't force it on you. No, we won't. <laughs> but we it's, won't. it's scriptural. Gloria, over these next three days, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, we're going to talk about 21 scriptures. These are scriptures. First of all, some of these scriptures are the ones that you gave us and I'm making available to you in your notes. These are from my collection, Gloria Copeland's handwritten Written. scriptures. Uh -huh. These they scriptures, were. now that's not the original. This is a copy. But one time you gave me your scriptures, house scriptures years ago when Terry and I were believing God for our house. And you said, make a copy of this. We, we were at your house. We were looking at them. I said, Gloria, can I make a copy? Yes. So I made a copy you of them, got a copy. and these are your scriptures, and we're going they to go work. through these. They did work, and they do work. <laughs> but let's talk about, first of all, the importance of why the scriptures. Why do we start here? Why don't we go to a realtor first? No, you have to go to the Word first, because the Word of God is 
the foundation. The foundation. To our house. Every house has to have a good foundation. And that's where we're going Amen. right now. Luke that's right. chapter 6. I like that. Luke chapter 6. Turn there with us. And that's why in going through all these scriptures, we know that the Word of God is the foundation. Now, we'll give you 21 scriptures plus two bonus scriptures. Okay. <laughs> now, in these scriptures, there may be three of these scriptures that really jump out at you and say, that's what we need to stand on to believe God for our house. Kenneth Hagin taught us this in, in a series that he taught many years ago about believing God and using your faith, he said, find three scriptures that tell you what you're believing God for. So that's what we're doing here. I don't remember that three scriptures. Find, locate three scriptures that tell you that's what good. God has promised you. At least three. At least three. At least three scriptures. So the word of God being the foundation for this. Yeah. Take a look at verse 46. It says, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? Whosoever shall come to me, hear my sayings, and who does them, I will show you to whom he is like. He is like a man, this is verse 48, he is like a man which built a house. He, yeah. he dug deep and laid the foundation on a rock. The storm beat vehemently upon that house and could not shake it, for the house was founded on a rock. But he that heareth and does not is like a man without the foundation built a house upon the earth, against which the stream did be vehemently, and immediately it fell, and the ruin of that house was great. Gloria, we have to build our house on the rock, which is the Word, the of, Word God. of God. The rock of the <clears throat> Word of God. And so that's where we take our foundation scriptures. We build our house on that. It, it was interesting years ago when, when Terry and I were renovating the house that we're in now, we, we kind of stripped bare the insides and started from scratch and re, resized rooms and added rooms. Well, one day we had a group of our people come over from the church and we wrote scriptures on the, the beams. So within the house itself, we have house scriptures all over that house. Now, I need to check something out with Missy about this because this okay. was their house. Yeah. This was Gloria's sister's right. house. And I need to check something, but I was told <clears throat> just the other day that in the entrance to the house, there is, a, there is a Bible buried. I think I've heard that. And in the entrance to the house, when you first walk into the house, uh, there's a Bible there buried. I did not know this. We've been there many years now, so I need to find out from Missy. But that really is a picture of how the Word of God needs to be the very foundation good. of our home. Yeah. And now, <clears throat> Gloria... You know, the Bible talks about hiding the Word in your heart. Oh, that's good. But hiding the Word in the floor in is your a front new door. revelation. That's a new revelation. <laughs> I just thought of that. I thought, there's a Bible buried in the front door of that's our house. Great. Missy, I'm going to check that out with yeah, you. Make sure that's it. right. But that's it, good. if it's not true, it should be. <laughs> we should do that. <clears throat> Gloria, you said in <clears throat> God's Will is Prosperity, your book, you have to take the scriptures on prosperity and meditate on them until they become a reality in your heart. That's right. Until you know that prosperity belongs to you. So I changed that up a little bit. You could really say you have to take the scriptures on how to believe God for a house and meditate on them mm -hmm. until they become a reality in That's your right. heart, until you know that that house belongs to Amen. you. Amen. I was praying a few minutes ago as we were preparing to start these broadcasts. I was walking around the studio and the Lord spoke something to me. He said this. He said, there are a lot of people that are going out there looking for a house, looking for a house got to find a house. And the Lord spoke to me and said, there's a house looking for you. That's good, George. One that's prepared for you. I like that. There's you know, a house looking there's for you. There's a house you. looking for you. And that Green River Courthouse, <laughs> the one that when you and Kenneth were in Tulsa and when you found Romans 13, 8, yep. oh, no man, anything but to love him or keep out of debt, the Amplified Bible says. When you found that... I thought the Amplified might help me, but it didn't. It didn't give you any help <laughs> at all. <laughs> it just reinforced what the yes, King James said. Right. But you made the decision, you and Kenneth, to believe God for a house debt-free. And the moment 
you started believing God for that house, there was a lady in Fort Worth right. building the house, started building the house that you were believing for. And that house... Although we didn't know it. You didn't know it at the time. You didn't... But we were believing. So you were meditating the Word. You were getting an image of the house. I was drawing plans. You were drawing plans and pictures and looking at magazines. Yes, that's right. You, you were meditating on the Word. And if I could read this very quickly, this is what you were doing. This is what Kenneth and Gloria are doing. This is what George and Terry Pearsons were doing. Joshua 1.8, this book of the law, which really is the Word of God. This sure. book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. You shall meditate on it. The word meditate is yeah. to fix your mind, yeah. fix your heart, fix your thoughts on it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that's written therein. For then you shall make your way prosperous and you shall have good Success. Good success. Hallelujah. So you have to meditate the Word, and the Word of God has to get down into your heart, and the Word has to be more real than what you're not seeing in the natural right now. You really have to see that down on the inside. Yeah, that's right. that's you right. and Kenneth, for instance, you saw yourself flying a Citation 10. And every year when we would come at convention time, we'd yeah. show the video. Yeah, that's right. For years. I'd like, I'd like to find out how many years actually it was from the time. I would guess maybe 10. I don't 10 know, years. Sure. When you and Kenneth both got it in your hearts to believe for the fastest civilian, civilian aircraft. That's right. <laughs> and released your faith for that. But you got that image down on the inside. And you saw yourself flying that. You did the same thing with your house. We, had to, we were in agreement that we would not borrow money. We would right. pay cash for it. And, and there was a day that came yeah. that, that that airplane manifested right. at Kenneth Copeland Ministries. There was a day that came, mm -hmm. Gloria, that Terry we and I moved. We did not quit believing. You didn't quit believing. No. And that's an important point. You just continued to do what Joshua just said to us here. Meditate that word. Obs uh, and don't let it uh, depart out of your mouth so that you might see observe it, to do. See it done. See it fulfilled. See it done. Amen. So today, Gloria, we're going to go through the, the first, I have seven scriptures that we'll go through okay. to begin with. And you listen to these, you write these down, you download these notes, these are here for you, and you begin to get an image. Get an image on the inside of the kind of house that you're believing God for. Our car, our or whatever it children is. Children yes. serving God. Yes, this works for everything. Amen. Church. We whatever happen to it be is. focusing on houses right now, but it works for yeah, everything. That's right. Terry Same and I, way. Terry and I, are believing God right now for a lake house. Oh, that's good. It's a house within a short driving distance, maybe an hour and a half from here. A place that we can go away together, that we can have books and Bibles, yeah. and a place that we can just leave. That's important. We can just leave for a little bit so that we can recharge and rebuild. Uh, as a matter of fact, I was going to ask you about this, but next week we were wanting to go to Arkansas to the prayer cabin for a couple of days. Oh, so sure. if it's not booked, can Terry and I go up there? I don't think we have any reservations there next week. Go okay. <laughs> and it should be beautiful now. It's, too. it's, it's a beautiful place in Arkansas. We go there, we meditate the Word, but we were thinking about a place. It's a little bit of a distance up there. We do fly up there, but just a place we could drive and a place for the kids to go, uh, just a short distance. Yeah. So that's what, we, that's what we're believing for. Amen. You we're believing for that. Like that. Debt free. If it's a desire of your heart, you should have it. It's a desire to and have. It's a, it'll be, uh, <laughs> it's a blessing because you get away and you you get up in the morning, there's no telephone, people calling you about what we're going to do about this mm -hmm. or that. Mm -hmm. You go out on your porch <laughs> or your deck and you study the Word. And you know, cell, cell phone service is not really good up it's there. It's not good in the it's, mountains. It's, it's spotty great. if Especially at best. when you turn it off. You got to go to town. <laughs> not good at all in Arkansas. When you you have to go out on the runway to hear, get yes, it. You do. And, and I was thinking you can, 
you can you can answer the phone there, but you can go, hello? hello? Uh, hey, you're, you're dropping out we, on me we here. We must have a bad connection. <laughs> so <laughs> it is, and it really fills us up. And that's my heart's desire is to have a place like that close to here, close to where we yeah, can go. So right. Terry and I were believing God, and these are some of the scriptures that we're standing on. Let's, let's go to the Bible for a couple of them, ones we don't have time for. We'll just read them to you. Okay, but, do it. Uh, Proverbs 24, let's begin there. We're building a foundation this for your house. This is a great scripture. Building your foundation yes. for the dream house that you have. What's in your heart? What do you see? Let's build that foundation together. Okay. Um, you know, in, somebody might say, well, I've got a house. I don't need a house. Well, write the scriptures down for your children. Yes. I mean, they're going to yes, need a house. Or somebody else. Or somebody or, else. Or teach this. Yes, teach it to amen. someone. In Proverbs 24, uh, I'll read it from the Amplified Translation. Through skillful and godly wisdom is a house, I like this, a life, a home, a family mm -hmm. built, and by understanding it is established on a sound and good foundation, and by knowledge shall its chambers of every area be filled with all precious and pleasant great riches. Scripture, hallelujah. Gloria, that is a magnificent scripture. A house scripture. furnished with wonderful things. Everything in That's it. That's good. The message translation, very important it takes scripture. wisdom to build a house and understanding to see it on a firm foundation. This is true. And then this translation, the uh, Holman Bible, it says, a house is built by wisdom. So what you do with a scripture like this, and I wrote this here in my notes, I wrote through, God, through skillful and godly wisdom, my house is built. You make it personal. That's right. You make it you yours. Can, that's if you're believing for healing or anything. Yeah, anything. Yeah. Anything. And with this, we're believing God for a house. The last scripture I read to you, my house is built by wisdom. So yes. through skillful and godly wisdom, Gloria, we read in Proverbs that wisdom is the principal thing. That's right. You can see why it would be. You don't know how to do anything without the wisdom we don't. of God. In the, you can do some things in the natural, but the natural just won't cut it. That's right. And we need the supernatural. We need the supernatural. We, we need the wisdom. wisdom of God. Yeah. And we needed, we needed the wisdom of God in the renovation of our home and, and how we were approaching that. We needed God's wisdom. And I saw... I saw with Terry especially, because we'll read a, a, a scripture here in a moment that talks about a wise woman. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. And I saw Terry. Well, it's sort of our field, you know. Houses. Yes, it is. I saw the gifts of the Spirit in operation. I saw her tell a builder one day, I want, she wanted a balcony out of one of the, the rooms. Yeah. That builder argued with her, can't do it can't be done. And I was standing there watching this. And she said, no, we're going to do it. God spoke to me and said, build, build this. And he, he just kept on, he finally gave in. And we now have a nice balcony outside of this room. Well, I saw that working on Terry. Mm -hmm. And you just, you get mm -hmm. a godly woman who knows what she wants and hears from God, she ain't going to back off. No, no. Not about that. Ask me how I know. <laughs> <laughs> she got her balcony. You know, Gloria, I hear about these different places and different churches and so forth that don't allow women to preach. Yeah. They're missing out. Well, George, we appreciate that. I'll tell support. you, and I'll just add my little, I've got three minutes. Tim, just go away. <laughs> Leave us alone. <laughs> but I, I, it's just ridiculous because we need the wisdom of women. What are you going to do? Leave out Proverbs 31? Yeah. So I, I trust my wife and I trust her and I trust what she gets from God. Like Vicki Burke said, wives are the female voice of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> I did Vicki say that. That's funny. And I've been around you for 37 years, Gloria, and you are a woman of wisdom. God. I have, I I have sat before that. you and I've heard you say things and you speak things and you, you have the wisdom of God operating in you for this family and I thank you for well, it. Well, George, that encourages me. Thank well, you very it's, much. It's true. It's the truth. Okay, so we got three minutes left. <laughs> Proverbs 9.1, wisdom has built her house. Proverbs 14.1. So you the, need wisdom in this. You need wisdom God's in wisdom this. wisdom in this. Proverbs 14.1, amplified, every wise woman builds her house but the foolish one tears it down with her own hands. One translation we read in that, the wisdom of women buildeth, buildeth their houses. I've never seen the that wisdom one of women 
builds their house. I can see women right now with their husbands elbowing yes, them. Yes, you got that. And I, I read uh, the, Ra uh, Ruth 4.11, Rachel and Leah built the house of Israel. I didn't, I didn't notice that scripture I didn't before. notice it until I started digging into That's this. That's good. Isaiah 65, 21, they shall build homes and inhabit them. See, that's the blessing. People that's under the, the curse build homes, but they don't live in them. They don't them. live in them. But this is the blessing. Proverbs 24, 27, put first things first. Prepare your work outside and get it ready for yourself in the field. And afterward, build your house and establish your home. Yes, well, I you know, do. that's what we're doing right now. We are, we are preparing our work outside, getting it ready in the field. We are building our house with the Word of God. Amen. Jeremiah 29, 5. Timing's important. Timing is, it's very important. It's very important. Why? Tell them why. Why is timing, the timing? Well, for one thing, money yeah, takes okay. money. <laughs> and we're going to pay cash There here. you go. But timing, is, that's true of anything. I mean, yep. the, it's that anointing. It's, it's the, anointing. the time. When it's time yes, to build, when it's time to do this, time to start a church, time to get married, whatever. Ecclesiastes, it's time. Ecclesiastes, there's a time to build. There's a time. There's a time. Amen. Jeremiah 29, 5, build yourself houses and dwell in them. Plant gardens and eat the fruit of them. And finally... Psalm 107, 7, Amplified. He led them forth by the straight and right way that they might go to a city where they could establish their homes. Oh, that's a good one, the, the message translation, He put your feet on a wonderful road that took you straight to a good place oh, to live. Oh, I like it. Isn't I that like good? It. good? Isn't that yes. good, Gloria? Amen. He put your feet on a wonderful road I was and thinking, took you. I was sitting on the porch of our house the other yeah. day, which is of course, surrounded by lake and water. And I thought, just think. I was out there with my Bible, you know, yeah. which I usually do in good weather. I go out there. Mm -hmm. Just think, this used to be a cow pasture. <laughs> <laughs> look at it now. No, look See, at it, it was a place that was yeah. called. Yes. Glory yes. to God. And the Lord put your feet on a wonderful road and took you straight. Yes, took to a good place to a good place to live. Father, we pray over these thank scriptures you, right now, and I thank you We're that so the grateful. image and the vision of a beautiful home is becoming alive yes. on the inside of us. In Glory Jesus' God. name, amen. 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 Praise amen. God, Gloria. Praise God. The Bible God. speaks of a peaceable habitation. Yes. So, so it's not just that you want yes. something pretty. It's something important to your well-being. That's I mean, right. Don't you get your most things out where... When you're, it's your spot in your house, mm -hmm. reading your word, I do. sitting on the porch, I do, I the do, deck I do. or whatever in your study. That's Glory right. to God. So we're talking about, we started this yesterday and we talked about how important it is to build our foundation of the house on the word. That's right. That we give the word of God first place where the house is concerned, that the first thing you don't do when looking for a house is look for a realtor. No, you go to the Word. Yeah, that's and right. you find scriptures that tell you what God says about your home, the will of God. Build that into your spirit. <clears throat> build it, build it down into your spirit. And you said, talking about building it down into your spirit, in the book, God's Will is Prosperity, in chapter 2, You've got to read that chapter because it's their testimony about believing God for a house. Gloria said this, you have to take the scriptures on prosperity and meditate on them until they become a reality or real on the inside in your heart. Until you know <clears throat> that prosperity belongs to you. So the word of God is what we use to build the image of the house on the inside. And when it becomes real to us on the inside and it becomes real in our thinking, then we will see the manifestation of That's that. Right. That's faith. That's faith. Yeah. That's and what we works. have to do, <clears throat> we're looking here at Psalm 1 and it says, Blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. I just threw this in here. Oh, okay. Nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. His delight is in the law of the Lord or the word of God. You delight in the word of God. Amen. And in his law, does he meditate day and night? Well, you know, without that, nothing else works. Exactly. Because that's how faith comes. That's how faith and that's comes. that's how you get on the God side of life, on the blessing side of life. Hallelujah. And when you, were, when you were in the process of believing for your house. It's not positive confession. No, it's not. It's faith it's in faith what God says. It's faith in what God said. And you meditated on that. 
you you have the magazines <laughs> to, oh, to prove yeah. it, the mm -hmm. pictures of the houses, which yes. which so <clears throat> we did the same thing. I was going through some things the other day at the house, kind of cleaning up some things and sorting out some files and so forth. Found a file folder, a file folder. You recommended that to Terry years ago for when we first got married. You said, Terry, get a file folder and you cut out pictures of the image that you have of a house and you put those pictures right. in there. Bedroom, bathroom, um, the, the closet kitchen. areas, kitchen, living room. And I looked at it, Gloria, and I pulled it out and they were very 1977, which some of that stuff is coming back into style. But those, those images, <clears throat> plus the Word of God, the Word of God that we were studying yeah. and the Word of God that we were looking into, <clears throat> the Word of God that we were studying and the Word of God that we were looking into was building, building an image. An image. And it That's says, right. you meditate on this day and night and the result is he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth fruit. Fruit will be the result. Fruit will be the result. In his season. You Remember meditate yesterday. meditate in the word day and night. Yes. You meditate. You begin to build that image down on the inside. Ladies, you build. You build the image of God's beautiful home for you down on the inside. Let it build. Husbands, men, you build that image down on the inside. And it says here, he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth his fruit. Or in this case, brings forth a house in perfect season. Amen. That's timing. Right. You talked about timing Timing's yesterday. Important. Yeah. And how important timing is. His leaf shall not wither and whatsoever he does shall prosper. The word of God is your foundation for your home. That's right. We read seven scriptures yesterday. We're on a, we're on a path here. 21 scriptures and two bonus scriptures we're Hallelujah. giving to you. So let's look at these, That's Gloria. That's always been important to the Lord. Look at the Garden of Eden. It was good. It was a good it was, place. There it was, was a good place. Bad. It was pleasant. The, the weather was pleasant. It had plenty of gold in it. It was just great. It had everything furnished yeah. fully. God furnished that. And he told them later in the scripture, build houses, go in and possess yes, the land. Yes, possess the land. That's and right. the word Eden, as we learn in the Hebrew, means house of pleasure. House of pleasure. i got to write that down. House I like of pleasure. That. So... Let's look at this. We looked at seven scriptures yesterday. Here is scripture number eight, Psalm 18, 19. He brought me forth into a large place. He was delivering oh, me really because he house. was pleased with me and delighted in me. <laughs> he brought me forth into a large place. Hallelujah. When Terry and I first married, we had a nice little house. It was a three bedroom, but it was small. It had a nice kitchen, nice living room. Along comes Jeremy. Yeah. So he gets one of the rooms. Yeah. <laughs> well, <clears throat> you know, you begin to, in a married life, you begin to collect things. When we moved into that house, it was nearly empty. But we began to prosper and we began to have more things. And then we had to move out because there was another one coming. Mm -hmm. So we moved out into a bigger house. <clears throat> so if you're in need of space right now, here's a scripture for you. He brought me forth into a large place. Hallelujah. I know that works. <clears throat> the Hebrew says, a roomy place with wide expanses. Oh, I like that. Don't you like that? Roomy place with wide expanses. So he'll bring us a house that is the right size perfect fit for what you need. Yeah. If you're cramped in space, if you've got a lot of kids and you need <clears throat> more space, well, you believe God. I mean, if, you're, if you are cramped in space and you need more space, well, this will be the scripture that you can scripture. stand on. He brought me forth into a large place, That's a roomy truth. place with wide expanses. And the NIV says a spacious place. Amen. I like that, George. That's a great scripture. Isn't that good? Mm -hmm. All right, let's look at scripture number nine. Psalm 66, 12. Thou hast caused men to ride over our heads. We went through the fire and through water. You have brought us mm. into a wealthy place. Glory to God. And the NIV says a place of abundance. 
and this other translation, a watered place. Yeah, if you're going to have a beautiful yard, you got to have a watered place. Sure, a watered place. That's right. And that's a scripture. That's a blessing, isn't it? it it's bringing well, what you. What did he do with Adam and Eve? He put them in a garden. Everything perfect. I would like to do a study sometime on the Garden of Eden. Do that, George, and come back and talk to us. I, I think there's some scriptures out there that we have yet to uncover. I agree. That tell us what was in the Garden of Eden. It's the, there's a restaurant called the Garden of Eden, but we're talking about Eden, <laughs> E-D-E-N, Eden. The Garden of Eden. <laughs> well, it's the will of God for us, isn't it? Yeah. That we live. Always. You know why it's important? <clears throat> Because it's conducive to spiritual life. Oh, that's good, Gloria. When you're living in a little bitty cramped up place, you don't have any place to go out and sit under the trees or look at the lake or do whatever outside. It's, it, you miss something. You're missing something spiritually. Yes. Because I, I write, Ken, when Ken studies, he'll go out on his porch. Mm -hmm. When I study mm -hmm. in the mornings, I go out on my porch. Here's him down here, and here's me down here. We're studying. And it's just something about being out, yes. out <clears throat> yes. in, a, in a nice, peaceful, green environment. It ministers life it back does. to you. It does. That's why we enjoy, Terry and I enjoy so much going up to the prayer cabins at, in Arkansas. Oh. We go up there, and <clears throat> here's the routine that we have. She stays at the big house. The, the big yeah. roomy kitchen, all of that. Which is not a very big house, but it's bigger than the it's other It's bigger than the other ones, but I'll go down and I'll, I usually stay at, um, I, either, I either go to the bunny cabin. The bunny room. <laughs> the bunny the room, room up there, because there's a little library up yeah. there. Or I'll go to the other cabin. And <clears throat> she has her time with the Lord. I have my time with the Lord. And Gloria, it just ministers it to does. me. It does. It ministers to me. We were on the, the phone the other day talking to Kenneth, um, <clears throat> had some things to ask him, and mm -hmm. we, could, we could hear the Arkansas birds in the background. Oh, yeah. The birds are great up and there. And I thought, man, do I want to be up there right now. Well, your house can minister life back to you, and that's how God that's wants us to God live. that's why God put them in a garden. You know, he, he didn't put them in a condo, really. Yes, that's right. He didn't right. put them in a little apartment. No. He didn't put them in the middle of where there's no trees and grass. Right, right, right. It makes a difference. Look at this scripture here, 2 Samuel 7, 10. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. I'm just saying no. there's some things <clears throat> missing there. There's some things missing. And I know there are people, there's some people that like living in an apartment. Well, well, good. You enjoy that. I remember our first apartment. It was about 300 square feet. <laughs> maybe, Tiny little maybe, thing. Maybe, maybe. Well, in an apartment. And, and we, we enjoyed it. Well, we, you enjoy that apartment. Yep but then you enjoy being where you are now. That's right. Well, we lived in an apartment for about a month when we were making our transitional moves that one year out of debt freedom, and we lived in an yeah. apartment. Here's the deal with an apartment. Who's below you and who's above you? That's true. And we had in that apartment, we had kids stomping, running below us. We had people <laughs> above us. We had people below us making all kinds that of noise. That would mess up a peaceable <clears throat> habitation, wouldn't it? It would. So listen to this scripture, 2 Samuel 7, 10. Moreover, I will appoint a place for my people Israel. A place. Oh, that's good. A place and will plant them that they may dwell in a place of their own and move no more. That is one of the best house scriptures I've ever heard. Isn't that marvelous, mm -hmm. Gloria? They will dwell in a place of their own. That talks about ownership. That is good, a place of their own. And it talks about debt freedom. Praise God. Not being a servant to the lender, but being having a place of your own, taking ownership of it. I have never seen that it. translation of that before. That's great. And I like the NIV translation. It says, a home of their own. A home of their own. That would be a good title for your uh, home, home a messages. A home of their own. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, the, another title would be, there's no place like home. That's right. That's right. There's That's no good. place like home. And Terry and I experience that. We come home at nights from the office here, and there are some days that just a lot of things going yeah. on, a lot of business Pressure. to take care of. And that home is our refuge. That's right. That's what it's supposed to be. It's a refuge to That's us. That's good. Yeah. So there is a scripture that says you can have a place of your own. John 14, 2. 
In my Father's house there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. Now, Gloria, this scripture is talking about heaven, yeah. talking about preparing a place for us. But, but I've learned from you and Kenneth that the meaning of scripture, it can be multi-layered, multi-dimensional. You can look at a scripture and meditate on that scripture and it will speak to you. So here's how it speaks to me. <clears throat> I'll give you an example. Um, Terry and I are believing God for a lake house. Told you that yesterday. We're believing God for a lake house. We'd like to have a place for us, for our kids, for them to take their kids. You know, Jerry Savelle, he talks about his lake house. He's yeah. got a lake house. And he talks about all his grandchildren yeah. coming out there. And they'll go out there. That's fun. <clears throat> they'll go out there on the 4th of July or some holiday. And all the kids are out there and they're playing and they go out in the boat. And I've really been inspired by the idea of a lake house. So Terry and I have determined that we are believing God for a lake house. Now you remember what Billy says, Billy Brim. She says, I do well by water. Oh, I like that. Do you like that? Oh, I like that. You know, <laughs> Billy, Billy just got a new house up in Arkansas, uh -huh, she's in, Arkansas up in, in, in uh, Branson. Yeah. And <clears throat> before she moved in, we were up there for the... Uh, the prayer mountain meeting that we go to every year. And uh, Billy said, while you're here, she hadn't even moved in yet. She said, go take a look at the house. So Terry and I and Cody and Aubrey, we drove out there, looked at it and the lake. Have you been, have you seen I the house? I have, it's beautiful Beautiful lake house, That's trees, lake. trees all around her. And so we're, we are believing God for this Amen. and I'm using this scripture right here. These are great scriptures. I'm using this scripture where Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you. So place is important now yes. and in the hereafter. Yes. Very important. It's very hereafter. important. <laughs> that and you go there, to the right place. There's a lake house out there looking for yeah, us. Yeah, we agree with you. All of us listening agree with and you. And there's for a the house out there house. right now looking for you. That's right. And that we house agree is with looking the for you. Proverbs 12, 7. Today when we pray, let's agree with all the people that are believing for the right home. The Let's right do it. Place. Okay. Let's do it, Gloria. Proverbs 12, 7 amplified, the wicked, are, the wicked are overthrown and are not, but the house of the uncompromisingly uncompr righteous shall stand. Now put that in your storm scriptures. Yes. Yes. You know, <clears throat> this is one of the scriptures, and I'll read this to you. Carlene, our producer, sent this to me. When you were on the broadcast with Kenneth last time, you were doing a promotion for these series that we're doing mm -hmm. now. And I got this from Carlene. She said, hello, Pastor. Today, Kenneth and Gloria were in the studio taping partnership. In their Friday clothes, Kenneth, Brother Copeland said, with much enthusiasm, all next week, Gloria and Pastor George will be on the broadcast teaching about how to believe God for a house, paid for, and how to protect it after you get it. Oh, that's good. The kind devourer, he said, has been rebuked for your sakes. He has no right to come and destroy your home. That's right. And, and, and Carlene said he was also speaking in light of all the devastating yes. storms that destroyed many people's homes. Yeah. So he was talking here about protection over our homes. You plead the blood of Jesus right. and <clears throat> you tithe. So you rebuke the devourer That's right. from entering in That's and stealing point. stuff from you. And it says here, the house of the righteous will stand. Amen. The NIV Amen. says, will stand firm. So your next house, whatever it is, it's not going to be a broken down old place that That's you right. come in later on and found out the foundation is breaking apart. No, it stands firm. And I like the message translation. The houses of good people. Oh, what a scripture. Hold together. I have never seen that, George. That's Isn't awesome. that great? That's, how much time do I have? I want to, oh, I got three minutes. The houses uh, of good people hold together. I want to together. tell about, I've told it a number of times, mm -hmm. but I'm sure there are people in the world that haven't heard it. Uh, when Ken and I were in the airplane and we were going somewhere mm -hmm. and right over in here, not, not in our spot, not where we were, but over here at a little distance, there was a funnel that started. It was dark mm -hmm. over there and the, the funnel started coming down. And we said, you get back up there in the name of Jesus. And that sucker went. <laughs> now that's what wow. you have to do to storms. <clears throat> Didn't Jesus say, peace, be still and at the storm? 
and that's why the disciples, and that's what we have yes, to do right. is talk to the elements when that's they're right. against us. Yes, yes. And so we just to protect said, your house. we know exactly what to do when, when a tornado or a funnel is in our path mm -hmm. or coming our way, mm -hmm. or if we're just watching the weather and they're saying there's things coming, you know. We say, no, you don't. You don't touch this house. Well, I remember in Florida when you were doing that meeting, and oh, that's right. at the convention center, <laughs> big dome, all of a sudden you're standing there. This How was healing school. That? You were standing there, and all of a sudden water was dripping on down my Bible. on your Bible. That's right. And you looked up, and there was a, I think it was a tornado. It was a tornado. And it, it touched its little tip down on the top and ripped up a little piece of the roof up there. And if I remember correctly, you took authority over that. And that tornado, instead of devastating the people and yeah, the building, right. it went it went back up. That, that, that tornado looked down in through the hole and said, oh no, it's Gloria Copeland and <laughs> believers, I'm out of here now. I'm glad you reminded me of that. That was in Tallahassee. And that thing, there was That's a right. hole up there from the tornado, and it was going on, you know. And when, we, if I recall accurately, and it hit the paper, so you could probably look it up. But if I recall accurately, when we prayed, mm -hmm. it just mm -hmm. went up, went and back that was up. The end of it. So our homes are protected. I know you it didn't do any damage protection. to the building, but I don't think it, further than that. But I don't think it went anywhere. That's right. It didn't. Glory it didn't. God. I and you went on. About you that. went on with healing school. They yeah. asked you, you want to, you want to cancel I, healing what school. Happened? I was no. doing healing school. I was reading scriptures, and I began to get water on my Bible. I thought, well, what is this? <laughs> and then I figured out what it was. And we, we kept wow. on. We finished healing school. Wow. Everything was cool. Two more scriptures. They've Go given ahead. me about 30 seconds here. In Isaiah 32, 18, the message, my people will live in a peaceful oh, neighborhood. that's good. In safe homes and quiet gardens. Oh, I like the gardens part too. Quiet gardens. And Glory finally, Psalm 78, 55, he drove out nations before them and allotted their lands to them as an inheritance. And he settled the tribes of Israel in George, their those are terrific. homes. You what have a good. home. Father, we pray right yes, now Lord, we pray over every, every person family. that's believing for a house. Yes, and Glory and I come in agree. solid agreement yes. together with them for their perfect home, debt-free. Debt-free, supernaturally, supernaturally coming to them. Father, in Jesus', in Jesus name. name. Amen. Amen. Amen, Glory. If you're believing for a home, you say, I take it. I take in it. In the name of Jesus. I take home, it. Home, perfect home. Home built for me, come to me in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Amen, Gloria. Gloria, what we did Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, today, we are talking about building the foundation yeah. of our house with these scriptures, with the Word of God. Amen. And we read a scripture on Monday, <clears throat> I think Tuesday too. Um, in Luke 6, it says, Whoever comes to me and hears my sayings, does them, I will show you to whom he is like. He's like a man which built a house, dug deep, dug deep, laid the foundation on a rock. When the flood came and the stream beat vehemently upon the house, it could not shake it, Amen. for it was founded upon a rock. Amen. And this is the rock. That's it. The Word of God is our rock that we build our house upon. So you and I have been going through scriptures, 21 scriptures. I like 21 it. scriptures, and Tay, we've got the rest of the scriptures plus two bonus scriptures for you. This is going to be so wow. good. And <clears throat> let me just mention a couple of things because we've talked about this and I forgot to do it, but we want your testimonies. Yes, Let us know. Right. Let Glory and I know what, what is God doing in your life, uh, where your prosperity is concerned yeah. and where your house is concerned. Send us some testimonies. There's a lot of people that have already believed God for a house. They have. And they're living in it right now. We want those testimonies. We want those testimonies because we want to encourage each other. We want to Amen. build up one another with these Amen. testimonies. And I want to remind you also, all of the outlines are available to you. Yes. Right now, you're, you're, you can go to kcm.org, look for the picture of Glory and Me, click onto that, and it will take you right to the notes. You can click onto those. They'll be right there before you. You can print them out. 
go back to the broadcast. Go back through these together with us and you'll be able to study these out. That's why we have these written down. That's why I put them on paper because we want to capture what we're talking to you about so you can go back and study them. Gloria, that's why 37 years being with you and Kenneth, mm -hmm. I have studied. You must have come as a little boy. I have studied. I, I was, I was, <laughs> I was what, 23 at the time. And you guys took me in and you fed me yes. and you clothed me Hallelujah. and you helped me Glory and you God. taught me. You taught me the word of God. Kenneth came to me one day. We were out at the Lake Arlington office and we were standing out by the pool that was there. It was a, it was a converted um, country, country club. club. We, we turned it into our offices and Kenneth stood there. He said to me, George, I will, I will mentor you. I will train you personally in the word of God if you let Sarah. me do it. Praise and that God. was 1976. Wow. And I'm still being trained Hallelujah. in the Word of God. You've been a good student. <clears throat> and that's what it's all about, Gloria. It's studying the Word. It's studying that Word. You, you, are, you are inspiring when it comes to your love for God's Word. I was watching Kelly on the broadcast um, some weeks ago when she was talking about family and love and so yeah. forth. And she's talking about you and said some wonderful things about you. You need to go back and watch hey, it. I want that. Um, <clears throat> and she was just talking about your love for the Word of God. Gloria, your love for God's Word. And I'm sitting here looking at her Bible right now. I know. I mean, these pages are so covered up with writing. You really do love God and love His I Word. I do, George. It's an inspiration to us because whenever we come over to your house, Terry and I, to sit down and talk about whatever, an issue, a problem, a situation going on, boy, out come the Bibles. That's right. Out, come the, out comes so the Word good. of God because it's our foundation. Yes, amen. You have trained us well. Good. Thank you. Hallelujah. And when I grow Wouldn't up... Wouldn't it be awful <laughs> to live without knowing that God oh, that's, wants to bless you and help you and heal that's darkness. you and prosper you? That's darkness. Not knowing the Word? No. Oh. No. This is a much you better way. You know what that's way. called? That's called a curse. It's called the curse. And we, when we make Jesus the Lord of our lives, the Bible says we are redeemed from the curse. Praise Hallelujah. God. Oh, Praise so God. Grateful. So these are available to you as well as a special internet broadcast that Terry and I recorded for you so I that you can learn, learn about our testimony. And I'm bringing Terry in on it because Terry, she's as well, a deep. a wise woman builds her house. A wise woman builds her house. And there are details of some of our things in our lives that, that she remembers. She, you think I'm detailed about things. I mean, she has... She's the, she's the multitasker. She remembers the, the small details. So she's going to bring some things to the table that, that will be helpful to you. So that's available to you as well. Gloria, let's look at these last scriptures about how to believe God for your house. And you can take these 21 scriptures and the bonus scriptures, read through them, just study them out and begin to confess them. Confess them. Take it, take the scripture for your home. Mm-hmm or your finances mm -hmm. or whatever, just like you take it for your healing. Right. That's it. Put right. it in your eyes and your ears, let it come out your mouth and take the territory. Take, take the territory. Oh, yeah. So let's look at these. Proverbs 3.33 in the NIV translation. The Lord's curse is on the house of the wicked, but oh, he blesses yes. the home of the righteous. Praise God. I like that. I do too. I like that. And then it says in the Darby translation, the habitations of the just shall yes, be blessed. Yes, glory to God. So we have a blessed home. We have a blessed house. We are blessed. And blessed is to be empowered yes, to prosper. Amen. amen. We, have amen. A, we have a blessed home. I like this one. This is Acts 17. You know, somebody might be yes. thinking, yeah, but I don't <clears throat> live in a very good place. I don't have a, a nice house. I have a crummy place. Well, the Lord will bless it. And it won't be a crummy place. That's right. It'll increase. And, and you believe God with these scriptures. And if, you, if he needs to move you out to a better place, it'll come. Believe God it'll come. for it. Take it, in other words. I like Gloria listening to Kenneth and Bill Winston when they're on the broadcast together. And especially with Bill Winston and the way he preaches and teaches. And he mm -hmm. talks about the blessing. Yes. and how the blessing is supposed to change our surroundings. It does. It changes oh. our house, our home. It changes our neighborhood. That's right. It should change. It really should change the neighborhood. We, when we, 
<laughs> when we moved out of the house, we got out of debt, then we lived in an apartment, and then we moved into this, we call it now the stink house, because it was the house that <laughs> we rented. Sound good. It was on the lake, it's kind of a nice house, but it had, it just had a, a septic, not a septic tank, but just a tank. Anyway, we had to leave it. But the interesting thing was the road, the road that was in front of our house, it was just a gravel road, kind of out in the country. It was just a gravel road and it just gets your car dirty and messy and all of that. And we were just believing God to change our surroundings. And no sooner were we there, they paved it. They paved the road. They paved the road. What about the stink? Well, the stink house we had to get out. They didn't, <laughs> they, well, here's the deal. <clears throat> that wasn't our house. No, you were in the wrong place. Didn't belong to us. It was owned by somebody else. And that somebody else was not about to spend the money. I bet that somebody else got that house back too. They got that house back. <laughs> oh, and well, I won't get into it. So we got, the Lord delivered us. But all that to say, I, I would think if we stayed there long enough, the whole thing would have changed. Yeah. But they paved the road and put nice, shiny pavement on that road. Well, that was a step up. The habitation of the just shall be blessed. Amen. Acts chapter 17, verse 26 in the Amplified. And he made, he made from one common origin, one source, one blood, all nations of men to settle on the face of the earth, having definitely determined their allotted periods of time and the fixed boundaries of their habitation. Mm -hmm. their settlements, their lands, their abodes. Hallelujah. So the NIV is a little bit clearer on it. It says, he determined the time set for them and the exact places oh, where they should live. Oh, I've never seen that before. That is just awesome. <clears throat> so you could pray if you were looking and considering move. Yes. You could pray on the basis of this scripture, yes. the exact place, place, the exact home or lot or whatever you have for me, Lord. Isn't that good, George? I've I'm never thinking seen about that one. I'm thinking about Cody and Aubrey, my daughter and and mm -hmm. son-in-law, and of course Cody is Billy's grandson, and they just a, a, a wonderful team married. Yeah. And they're living in a little house right now, um, but now they have two babies that are growing up. And I'm thinking, and Aubrey's in the other room right now watching, but I'm thinking, Aubrey, this is a this is a scripture for you to believe God for. He determines the time set for them in the exact places where that you should live. That is a great scripture. Hallelujah. So not only for my daughter, but for those that are watching right now, he will determine the exact place where they should live. You know, Gloria, Terry and I talked about that stink house. We've talked about it and we really, we really I've saw. I've heard of a sink hole now. I've heard now of a stink, stink house. house. Okay. We really, we were in a hurry. Yeah. And we jumped that the gun. <laughs> we jumped the gun. And as we, in retrospect, we looked back on it and we shouldn't have been at that house. Well, sometimes we learn from experience. We do. You know, we don't know everything. <clears throat> We're just like everybody else. We have to learn. And so we got out of that. We evacuated that house one Saturday night. We, one Saturday <laughs> night and we moved in with you. Oh, now that was a solution, <laughs> they, wasn't it? They came. I forgot about that. You all came home from a meeting. And we had come. And you had <laughs> the, the, the three little bears, the, the two little bears came home from a meeting and, and your porridge had been eaten and the bed had been slept in. <laughs> I forgot about that. And we, <laughs> you came in and we, we told you, well, we had to move out. Can we, can we use the back bedroom there? And you were so gracious to us. You were so wonderful. Yes. And we had, we had a great time with you those six weeks that we were now, with see, you. what if I hadn't had an extra bedroom? What if you didn't have an what extra bedroom? Done. What would we have done? Where, where would we have gone? <laughs> what would we have happened to us? But you, <laughs> you were That's so good, good to George. us. George, I'd forgotten all about that. <laughs> so he has the exact place. He does. That's he an, has the all, exact. That is an awesome translation. I really he has the exact like that. place for you to live. Yes, amen. The determined time set in the exact place. Here's another one. If we're, we're keeping count here, it's, it's scripture number 17 out of 21. Psalm 16, five and six in the New Living Translation. Lord, you alone are my inheritance, mm, my cup of yes, blessing. Isn't that hallelujah. beautiful? You guard all that is that mine. That is good. The land you've given me is a pleasant land. What a wonderful inheritance. 
mighty. Now that's a great scripture. That is terrific. That's the New Living Translation. It's New Living, but look at what the message says. My choice is you, God, first and only. Mm -hmm. And now I find I'm your choice. You set me up with a house and yard, and then <laughs> you made me your heir. Praise God. Hallelujah. So God sets us up. Yeah. With a house and a yard and a yard. And you know you have to start where you are. Yes. I was thinking about that yeah. little house on Florentine that mm -hmm. Ken's dad helped us to mm -hmm. get into. It yeah. was a house <laughs> and a little yard. <laughs> and boy did we it, but it was a new house. Yes. A little house but yes. a new house. Did was it ever a blessing? It was a blessing and to the you. The kids got in one of the best schools that uh, that they could have mm -hmm. gotten in in that Mm -hmm. part of the world. You know something, Gloria? Not, not an expensive, it was a, pu a public school, but it was really a good school. One day, Terry and I took Jeremy and Aubrey, this may have been before Jeremy graduated from high school, we took them on what we call a heritage tour. Oh, that's fun. And we took them, we took to them to Nani and Granddad's old house, Veneta and A.W. Copeland, Kenna's parents, we took them to their house, we took, which they'd been there, but it'd been a long mm -hmm. time. We took them to your Green River Courthouse. We took them to our old house in Arlington when Terry and I were first married. A historical, historical tour. tour. And we took them to Florentine. Did you now? We showed them the house on Florentine, that house that Granddad yep. helped get you into. Yep. And <clears throat> then we looked at the house because two houses down is where your mother, Ma Deer, lived. Yeah. back then. That's right. And so we, I've seen these houses I, and I've seen what God has done in your life, what he's done in our life. Gloria, he has blessed he us. He has blessed us. He has blessed George. us. It'd probably do you well to go on a historic tour sometime yeah, and see where to, you've been. Just to remember. Just to remember where you've been and where you are now. And he, he will set you up Lord, with a house will, That a is yard. a great scripture. He will set you up Proverbs 14, 11, in the New Living Translation, the house of the wicked will be destroyed, but the tent of the godly will flourish. So really a tent back then was a home. Right. It was a house. And our houses flourish. Amen. And that word flourish, it means to prosper. It means to enlarge. It means to increase. It means to abound. I mean, these are all of the different... Hebrew definitions that I've studied on yeah. the word flourish. So our houses are you flourishing. Know, uh, that little house on Florentine that you were talking about was mm -hmm. just a little house, mm -hmm. but it was a new little house and it had a updated <clears throat> kitchen from what I'd had, you know, and it, I've forgotten, I want to say it was 40 something thousand dollars or something cheap. Mm -hmm. Now it'd be mm -hmm. so cheap, it, yeah. but it was cheap, yes. but I don't remember exactly. I think it was that. And uh, we enjoyed that house. And there was a, a good school, for a public school for the kids there that was run what by a, a spirit-filled woman. See, God's got he it takes care covered of, he if takes you'll care let him. Of all of the details, every That's detail right. of that he takes care of. That's right. I, should I mention this? I guess I could. Because Terry actually said she was there when this happened. But you don't, you just don't get angry. You not just often. don't, not often, you just don't. <laughs> And Terry said that she remembers the time that I think it was either John or Kelly that was just really. I got angry that day. It just, I have to admit. You just, she, they just I really. Know you can tell. They, they just pushed your button just a little too they far. They were on my last. What, what is it? <clears throat> on your last nerve. My last, last nerve. nerve. John and especially. You, you jumped. Was it the couch? Yeah, this that was a little well, Florentine house. I was over here at the sink, mm -hmm. and so it was a one room, you know. And here's two love seats in front of a television, and over here was the bedrooms on the other side mm -hmm. of that love seat. Mm -hmm. So John pushed my button that day, <laughs> and I jumped over the love seat, and I took off after him. I'm ashamed, but it's so true. <laughs> oh, that's okay, and, Gloria. And I bet he never forgot it either. <laughs> oh, man. Well, Terry was an eyewitness. She was there. She okay. was there. She saw it. She, with she, everybody. And apparently she was impressed. And Kenneth and <laughs> Terry. I jump over the couch. And Kelly were all like, what did she just do? <laughs> it's like somebody said that he got on my last nerve. On my know? last nerve. Okay, they just gave me a two-minute signal funny, here. That's funny, So here George. we go. I hadn't thought of that in a long time. Psalm 68, 6 amplified, God places the solitary in families and gives the desolate a home in which oh, to dwell. What a good scripture. He leads the prisoners out to prosperity, but the rebellious dwell in a parched land. Glory to God. So he gives the desolate a home. Yeah. 
The desolate. That the means, desolate. That's not the rich. That's right. It's the desolate. That's right. In uh, other words, he, he's the helper. He, he helps them. You don't have to start with something. That's right. I like that. I like, you don't have, like, to start you don't have to start with something. With something. Desolate means you don't have anything. Correct. Ooh, Ooh I like that. That's good. I'm going to write that Psalm down. Psalm 127.1. We've read this scripture before, but I saw something in it, really very simple. Unless the Lord builds the house, its labors labor in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the watchmen stand guard in vain. And I saw this, and on my paper, I just highlighted the Lord builds the house. Yeah. It says, unless the Lord builds the house. That's well, right. that, you can turn that around. If he's not in it. If he's not in it. But if God is in it, the Lord builds the house. Yeah. What Hebrews, is it little as much when God is in it? Little is much when God is in Hallelujah. it. I like that. Hebrews 11.10 from the new NIV translation. For he was looking forward to the city with foundations whose architect and builder oh, that's was God. Good. So if you're building a house, you just look up that scripture. You stand on it. Architect and builder is God. In our bonus scriptures, Gloria, on page two there, bonus These are scriptures. Great scriptures. George. Second Samuel 7, 27. O Lord Almighty God of Israel, you've revealed to your servant saying, I will build you a house. Hallelujah. So receive that from the Father. I will build you a house. In 1 Chronicles 28, 19, the message, here are the blueprints for the whole project as God gave me to understand it. Wow. He 21 scriptures, Gloria. We met That's three days. That's awesome. Hallelujah. Three days, 21 scriptures, Good and two bonus job, scriptures George. in three days. And you came out even. <laughs> Glory to God. Gloria, today we're going to talk about, and this is the title of our message, The Lord Will Furnish Your House, Hallelujah. Your Home. The Lord Will Furnish Your Home. I like that. And uh, let's look at 100, the 112th Psalm. I'm going to read something to you, and we'll go through some scriptures. Okay. Psalm 112. It says in verse 1, Praise you the Lord. Blessed is the man that fears the Lord, that delights greatly in his commandments or greatly in his word. And today we're going to be sharing some scriptures with you, his word about God's will for the furnishing of your home. It says, His seed shall be mighty upon the earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Wealth Amen. and riches Wealth and shall riches. be in his house and his righteousness endures forever. I'm going to read to them, Gloria. The, uh, the yes. Amplified says, prosperity. Oh, that's good. And well-being or welfare, or, and that doesn't mean like government welfare. Government welfare. Well-being <laughs> are in his house and his righteousness endures forever. Prosperity is in his house. Oh, hallelujah. The Lord has blessed us and it he is will. Well, it says in verse, uh, it says, for, verse four says, light arises in the darkness for the upright. So, so regardless of what's going on around it, whether it's depression, recession, That's right. whatever it That's is, right. for the upright, gracious, compassionate, and just, the light arises for them who are in right standing with God. Mm -hmm. It is well with the man who deals generously. Oh, I like that. And lends. It is well. Who, who, uh, conducts him, his affairs with justice. So mm -hmm. the blessing is out there. It's out there and it's working. Oh, the blessing is working yes. in our households. All the time. Gloria, I want to read to you something that Kenneth wrote in the Faith to Faith devotional. This is from November 13th of the devotional that we have and it's available to you. It's online. We have it in our store. Praise we can God. get that to you. It's a great book to read every day. Yes, it's every very day. encouraging. So this is what Kenneth wrote. He said, and this is in response to the scripture that we just read. I'll never forget the time Gloria discovered that scripture. <laughs> Wealth and riches. We didn't have any money at the time and the walls in our house were as bare as they could be. But she was ready to decorate. So she took that promise, wealth and riches shall be in his house and laid claim to it by faith. Suddenly, everywhere we went, somebody was giving us a painting or some other little treasure for our house. Unfortunately, most believers aren't as quick to believe God for that kind of thing as Gloria was. Some even claim God doesn't promise in the New Testament believers for the New Testament believers physical prosperity, just spiritual. But the truth is, you can't That's separate right. the two. That's why Jesus says if you'll seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, then all these material things will be added unto you. He knows the spiritual realm and the material realm are connected. 
Don't let anyone talk you yes, out of amen. God's promises of prosperity. You don't have to choose between financial and spiritual prosperity. Both belong That's to you. Right. Lay claim to them by faith. As a born again child of God, dare to reach out and receive Hallelujah. the riches that belong to you. That's good, isn't it? I like that. So those riches, Gloria, belong to us. And I just thought it would be really good for us today because we're talking about believing God for a house. But, but it's, not, it's just not right to walk into an empty place. That's right. It's just not right to see bare walls and no curtains on the, the uh, windows. And I have such an appreciation for, for beautiful homes, for decorating. Yes. You know, that's my background as an artist. Yes. But I have such an, a, de a deep appreciation for, like, for instance, going through your house. I've, looked, I've gone through your house before and I've just studied the different things that you've done with the decorating and how this is done and just the beautiful decorations. Terry and I have the same thing at our home. Uh, one of the things that we do, did in renovating our home, all of the, all of the door entrances and everything to, from like into the dining area and all that, they were squared. I like arches. Yeah, they're soft. I think, yeah, they're soft and they're stately looking. And so we just decided to do that. And now I was sitting in the living room the other day. Those little things make a lot of difference. They do. they do. They do. I was sitting in the living room the other day and I looked through and th there are several hallways that you can look through and they were all arched. And I just said, thank the you, Lord. Lord. Is good. Thank you for arches. <laughs> yes. And amen. Terry, she, she just kind of loaded up the house with beautiful molding. There's beautiful molding in all of yeah. the rooms. I lay in bed at night and look up and there's a little, there's a chandelier and then there's a, a molding around the chandelier up mm -hmm. on the ceiling. So the chandelier comes down and there's a molding from, it's not just a chain that comes down. There's a beautiful molding around it with, yes. with patterns in it. Those things are important. They're important to a family. They're that's important right. well, to a important. wife. Beauty is important. And, and you are an artist, so you especially appreciate that. I, I do things. have an appreciation for that. And, and you, 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 can, you can feel a house. I remember years ago when I was executive director, we, we rebuilt or did a new set for the uh, conventions. And for whatever reason, the, the people who were designing the set and building it, they were using very thin material. And it just felt, I, I thought about it myself, I thought, this just feels thin. Well, we set it up for Kenneth's approval. But guess what? It didn't fly. <laughs> Out the door. He said, feel this. Yeah. Feel this. That's not and, right. And it's important. I remember when we were building the church over here and we were, we were having a, um, a chair we were, we were testing out the chairs. Yes, I remember that. So we had, I think we had you and Kenneth come to look at the chairs and there were several different kinds of chairs. Mm -hmm. Well, Kenneth took the chair that we had chosen, turned it over and stood on it and jumped and it cracked in half. Oh no, I don't remember that. So what we had to do was go back and reinforce it because he didn't want, it, he didn't want those chairs well, yeah. breaking. So it's important. Those things are important. That's right. And so in the word of God, if you're believing for a house, you might as well just go ahead and believe for the furnishings That's right. of your house. And I'm going to oh, give man. you some scriptures. We have some scriptures here. These are good. <clears throat> and we'll just read down through, through these and comment on them. But the first one is Deuteronomy 6, 10 and 11 in the Amplified. When the Lord your God brings you into the land which he swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give you with great and goodly cities which you did not build, and houses full of mm. all good oh, things isn't that good? which you did not fill. Houses full. Of and you can, you can go on with this, Gloria, and it says cisterns hewn out which you did not hew and vineyards and olive trees which you did not plant. Praise God. That's good, George. I like that. You know, we talked about in the, the first of last week when we started this series, we talked about God's will for a home. Yeah. And we went right back to the book of Genesis where God put the man in the garden, the garden of Eden. That's right. And we found out that the word Eden was not only the, the Hebrew says, not only the, the region of Adam's home, but it calls it a house of delight. Yes, amen. A house of delight. Glory to God. You know, a house is important. Whenever we have, whenever we have people that are coming over, it's amazing 
how much cleanup you do. <laughs> <laughs> and it's amazing how much extra dusting is done. Well, you know, that, that's just part of our being as humans. I mean, God, when he made the garden, mm -hmm. he didn't just put up trash. I mean, it was beautiful it and was perfect. Beautiful. And it was beautiful. There was nothing bad in that garden that's right. until Adam and Eve sinned. You know, I look around, I look around at this set that we have right here and just the work that's gone into it. And it's a set, but it's a beautiful set. I watch it on TV sometimes and I look at the lighting and I see how things are. We, like, just the you know, we like to go to the mountains and look, just sit out on the deck mm -hmm. and look at the gorgeous valley and mountains. And sometimes it's covered with snow and sometimes it's green and beautiful. Why do you think all that's there? God has for the blessing for of his people. That's right. Glory to so God. So we find this scripture here that you'll have houses full of all good things which you There's did your not There's a furnishing fill. scripture. That's a furnishing scripture. In Psalm 112, verse 3, we just read this scripture that said, Wealth and riches shall be in his house. Look at the message translation. Their houses brim with wealth and a generosity that never runs dry. You know, in the furnishing... That might tick some people off to think, <laughs> well, well, what do they need that for? Well, God apparently thought it was important because he put it in his word. You know what, why, why are things pretty, uh, his, his creation, why are they beautiful instead of ugly? Mm. Do you want to go live in the Sahara Desert mm -mm. where there's no trees? No. Or, no. Well, I don't know, there might be some trees, but no, no lush foliage. Right, and, right. No. It's important that, that to in, us. That ministers to men and It ministers women. to us. Men and women. Yes, it does. It ministers to, to all us. of us. And... Uh, I like these scriptures. Their houses brim with wealth and a generosity. Now, this generosity, and this is what Terry and I have done. You and Kenneth have done the same thing. But we've learned to give. Mm -hmm. And our motivation for accumulation is distribution. That's right. And in our home, I can't tell you the number of times that, well, for instance, we were believing God for new furniture for a house that we were going to move in. And we sewed good furniture, yes. not cheap stuff, yes. not old stuff, but we sewed furniture into families. We sewed a beautiful uh, dining room table that we had. Great, the, the the legs on it were beautifully designed, and it was a it was a it was not a cheap table with the chairs, the chairs that Terry went ahead and she had them had the upholstery work done on that. They were beautiful. And the Lord told us to sow that to a family. Praise God. So there was at one point in our house, we actually, um, we actually used lawn chairs to watch TV. <laughs> oh, I've been there before. Because I'll we had you, not. I remember a time in our life when we had a rollaway bed. Y'all have heard me tell it, just don't cry. We got over it. And a <laughs> coffee table that Ken made in high school, like a metal table. In shop. shop. Yes. And I rented. The rollaway bed oh, didn't dear. even belong to us. Oh, dear. We rented it. And that's and we didn't have a stove. That's... We didn't have a refrigerator. Don't cry. That's George. so We bad. got over it. <laughs> <laughs> we had a black. It. it was way back when. And we had a black and white television. The television was this size. And the picture was this <laughs> size. I've heard this, yes. <laughs> Oh, mercy. And Poverty got, is not a blessing. And you got the, you got the Beverly Hillbillies on there. Yeah, that's when the Beverly Hillbillies Come first listen came to out. a story about a man uh -huh. named Jed. Jed was Poor mountaineer, tough. barely Jethro kept his family fed. <laughs> yep. But then one day he was shooting for some food and up from the ground yes, come a bubbling that's crude. when the Beverly Hillbillies <laughs> first Oil, came Oil, that is. On. Texas that's exactly tea, right. black gold. <laughs> okay, let's move on. That's funny. Um, Psalm 122.7 in the Amplified Translation, may peace be within your walls yes. and prosperity Amen. within your palaces. That's excellent. A house furnishing scripture. Good. Proverbs 15, 6 in the Amplify. In the house of the uncompromisingly righteous is great priceless treasure. Praise God. There you have it. The NIV translation, the house of the righteous contains great treasure. Mm. There's a place in North Carolina in, in, uh, at, in um, oh, Asheville, thank you. Oh, yeah. It's the um, the Biltmore. <laughs> thank you, Thank Tim. you, Timmy. You've been there. I'm getting my the cues off. That is an awesome place to visit. It really is. No, truly, thank you, Tim. I needed that. The Biltmore Estate. 
And of course, my sister lives near there. And so when we've gone before, we go see the Biltmore Estate. And Gloria, it does something for me. The, the man... <laughs> it's lavish. It's lavish. Say. And the man that designed all of the gardens and all of the, not just the gardens, but the, the landscaping, because when you're driving into this place, really, you, you think about the Garden of Eden. Mm -hmm. And you can get a really good sense and a picture by going to the Biltmore Estate, because once you drive into the estate, they, they have landscaped all of it. It's all landscaped. And you can tell the man who designed uh, the, the, um, what, the gardens in New York, the, what are they, Tim? <laughs> The uh, Central Park. Central Park. Central Park. The, the one who designed Central Park is the one who designed the Biltmore Estate. It's they had him come. Place. And it just fills your eyes and the gardens that are around the house and the, the, the man that tended those gardens all of those years. And then you go inside and, and they only... It does stretch you a little bit. It does stretch you. <laughs> and the, the interesting thing about it, I don't know what the exact percentage is, but they only show the public a certain percentage of the house because the rest of it is not even renovated. What you see when you go through is only a small percent of the rest of the house. It's huge. It's huge. <laughs> it is huge. And it gives Wouldn't you a vision. It again. So Proverbs 24, three and four, amplified, through skillful and godly wisdom is a house, a life, a home, a family built. And by understanding it is established on sound and good foundation. And by knowledge, shall its chambers of every area be filled with all precious and Glory. pleasant riches. A house riches. with furniture. Furniture. Not a rollaway bed. Not a rollaway bed, not a television with a screen that no. only shows that much. <laughs> no, that's, that's not right. <laughs> Glory to God. The New Living Translation of that scripture says, through knowledge its rooms are filled with all sorts of precious riches and valuables. The NIV translation, through knowledge, its rooms are filled with rare and beautiful treasures. And I like the message translation. It takes knowledge to fill, furnish its rooms with fine furniture and beautiful drapes. Oh, that's an interior design scripture, That's an interior it? design scripture right there. Beautiful drapes. Mm -hmm. And we've done that in our home. We have beautiful drapes that are on the home. I appreciate what my wife Terry, I appreciate what you have done. What and does I, it say about in the scripture, a wise woman builds her house. Builds her house. And a wise man, this is my scripture. Shuts up and listens. Stays out of it. Stays out of the way. That's not scripture. No, but it's... Good advice. It's good advice. <laughs> the Lord, I just, I don't know, I can just hear people saying right now, the, the, the ones who are against prosperity, and they're talking about how wasting your money on that. But folks... I'm married to a woman who loves beautiful things. I ain't married to you. That's right. I live with her. I don't live with her. I mean with you. And I, hush, Tim. I, I want to bless my Certainly. wife. I want her a to be blessed. A wise woman builds her house. With precious. And a wise man stays out of it. That's it right but there. But that's not scripture. That's that it right part. there. <laughs> okay, they're giving me what? 30 seconds. Stop that, You got to be kidding. It's, okay, I'll finish out. 1 Kings 638 in the Amplified uh, in the 11th year in Bull, the 8th month, the house was finished throughout according to all of its specifications. So the specifications of the house were completed and finished. Isaiah 61, 4 in the NIV translation, if you're renovating a house, here's your scripture, they will rebuild the ancient ruins and restore the places long devastated. They will renew the ruined cities that have been devastated for generations. So if you're mm. renovating a house, That's a good renovation. there's your scripture. Now I'm giving you kind of a bonus scripture here. Glory, this is for foreclosure. Okay. People who are facing foreclosure. Okay. Isaiah 61, 22 in the message, no more building a house that some outsider takes yes, over. Amen. No more planting fields that some M enemy confiscates. Confiscates. You know, George, there's a lot of uh, hard things going on right now in the financial realm for yes, people. There are. We just got a few seconds, but play, pray for people who are in that situation. I'll do it. Okay. I'll do it. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray over every person right now yes, that is going through financial difficulty. And I thank you thank that you, they Father. are thriving and not just yes, surviving. They yes, are flourishing yes, and they're yes. not failing. And thank Father, you, I thank for you for moving. harvest. I praise you that harvest is coming up and you are meeting thank and you, supplying Jesus. all of their need according to your riches and glory yes, by Christ Lord. Jesus. Amen. And the windows of heaven are open the over them. The blessing of the Lord is being poured, poured out. out. They're blessed coming in. They're blessed going out. 
They're Father. blessed in the city and blessed in the field. And Father, we're standing on your word and believing yes, you right now blessing that the blessing is at work in them. Hallelujah. In Jesus' in name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise Glory God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Well, I got that. Glory to God. On this broadcast today, Gloria, we're going to talk about something that's so important that when you begin to believe God for your house, just like Kenneth and Gloria did, they started and it took six years to get to that debt-free house. You were believing God. You were walking. You were doing what? Standing your ground. That's right. Believing God. You were believing well, we God. We had made a commitment. We couldn't do anything else. It's a good thing we'd made a commitment. <laughs> but you know, it's, it's easy as time goes on and you don't see the results you want to become discouraged and to let go of your faith and to be, become disillusioned with this. But there's a very important right. scripture and I'm going to ask you to read that scripture. It's Galatians 6, 9 in the Amplified Translation. 6, 9. You hold fast to yes. Galatians 6, 9 as you're believing and, God for your house. And let us not lose heart and grow weary and faint in acting nobly and doing right. We mm. can't quit. We can't quit. For in due time, now that's an important word right yes, there. Yes, it is. Due time, it is. Your due time comes. In due time and at the appointed season, we shall reap if, if we do not loosen and relax our courage and faint. That's it right there. Good things take time. So they do take time. Even when you're believing for your healing, it's not always instant. But you'll get it if you won't waver. You know, I remember years ago, Brother Savell, Jerry taught a, a, a message, a series on what to do between uh, the, the amen and here it is. Yeah, that what, was what do you do in that particular time frame while you're believing God for your house or you're believing for your healing That's or right. believing for anything? What we do is we don't lose heart, don't grow weary no. and faint in acting nobly and doing right. Well, walking by faith is doing right. We don't waver. We do not waver. We remain fixed, stable. We do, we're not double-minded no. about it. You make a quality decision That's about right. living debt-free. You make a quality decision about believing God for a debt-free home. And oh, you yeah. gather up the scriptures, the scriptures that we've been sharing with you over these last two weeks, and you declare them every day of your life. Right. And when that time goes by and it doesn't seem like anything has happened, that discouragement tries to get in. And I remember when we were renovating our house, it took five years to do it, paying cash. And there was a period, a season of time where nothing was really happening. And we just go over there to the house. We'd walk through it, same yeah. old, yeah. same old beam, and the same old door that's not there, and the same old. But you held fast. But we were holding fast, and we went over to your house one time. It, you know, usually, it, Terry and I, we, it, I, either I'll be discouraged, and she'll pump me back up. Yeah. George, get back on your faith. Believe God. Yeah. Or she's discouraged, and I'll get her back up. But we ran into a time when we both got discouraged. Uh-oh, this uh -oh. is bad. <laughs> so we did. We, we, we actually called Kenneth about it. And in his, his usual, just confirming words of faith, he, he starts it out. He goes, ah, oh, kids, you just rolled the care of that over unto the right. Lord. And he said this to us. He said, now listen to me. He said, you made the decision to, to buy this house and renovate it debt free. He said, what you need to do is look at your progress. Yeah. Look at good. what progress you've made. You've made steps. You're, you're almost there. He said, don't lose heart. That's don't right. give up. Right. Keep standing. And you know, Gloria, I've held fast to that. There are many things that you've said to Terry and I that come back up in us all the time, whenever we need them, whenever that word is needed, it'll just rise back up. And even in other things that I do, I think to myself, yeah, but look at the progress we've made. Yes, look at how far we've come. Look at what we've, That's look good. at That's what faith has done. Mm -hmm. So what we have to do, here's a word of encouragement for you. Stand your ground yeah. and don't give up no matter how long it takes to believe God for your house or anything else. Stand your ground. Amen. Isn't that, that true, is Gloria? Excellent. That's excellent. true. You, what about a 40-year loan? How long is that? 
That's 40 years. Well, it won't take you 40 years <laughs> it to won't. leave. No, to it pay won't. cash for a house. And you won't have to pay the extra interest in That's it right. either. You pay for it two or three times. So, what do we do? We don't give up. We don't give up. You That's it right there. remember what the Lord said to us. Inconsistency lies the power. That's We're right. Consistent. That's right. We stay with it. We stay with until it. Until the answers stay manifest. We stay with our scriptures. We stay with the word. We stay our healing in is the same our way. healing. We stay in faith. We stay in Amen. faith. And I've been around here long enough. We've seen challenges we in have. the ministry through the years. What was the one time we, we were, we got way behind. Six we, million dollars. Six million dollars. Yeah, I was there. And that was, I was back a long time ago. So six million. Was that was more 1980. Than it is right now. Gloria, I know that one in detail because I was executive director. I was living through every day of that. Yeah. That was 1989. We were six million behind. But you know something? We couldn't we, waver. We, we, couldn't, we couldn't. We couldn't. We couldn't it. give up. We couldn't quit. We couldn't lay down. We couldn't throw in the towel. That's right. And you and Kenneth were believing God. During December, we were at the height of that, that deficit. And I gathered the staff every morning. We praise, praise God. God. We praise we God. We praise God and thank God. And you know what? By the time we crossed over into the new year, something happened. And when we got to May of 1990, we were caught up completely in our accounts payable. And when we got to July the 7th of 1990 at nine o'clock in the morning, <laughs> ask me how I know. Jan Harbor, your, your sister, who's over our accounting department, came into my office with a check and said, George, this is the final payment for the TV bill. And Praise we never went God. back, how never we went back. But, but if we quit, we didn't. No, we, we couldn't. wouldn't have made it. We wouldn't have made it. Glory. But we God. didn't quit. We and you, don't quit. You don't quit That's either. Right. You don't give up either. That's you right. stay with this. That's encouraging. I'll say this again, and I've got this in your notes. Stand your ground. Don't give up. No matter how long it That's takes right. to believe God for your house or to believe God for anything else, yeah. don't give up. Don't quit. Don't quit. Amen. Gloria, let's look over here at okay. Hebrews. Chapter 6 and verse 12. Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 12. This message that we're preaching to you today, it really does work for anything and everything mm -hmm. that you're going through. Not Children. just a house, but everything in yes. our lives. The key is that we stand our ground and we don't quit and we don't give up. And we do what Hebrews 6, 12 says, Be not slothful, but followers of them through who? Through faith and patience inherit the promises. Through yeah. faith, faith and, patience, and patience, we inherit the promises. That's an important scripture, scripture isn't it? says, let patience have, have her, her perfect, perfect work. work. Glory to God. It does take patience. And patience. There's no question. We'd love, wouldn't it be great if it was instant? But here you know you might have spent 25 years creating this mess you're dealing with now. Oh, yeah. And oh, yeah. And it might take a little few mm -hmm. days or a few months, even a year or two to get out of it. We don't plan it that way. Right. But right. however long it takes, that's how long we're going to believe God and we're not moving off. Patience is a force of the recreated human spirit. That's right. I've heard you preach on patience. Love, joy, peace, patience. Patience. Pa and patience, some people think about patience and the, and, and the way they describe it, it's like patience is, is hunkering down until the storm passes over. Patience is being satisfied with whatever happens. Whatever happens, we'll just be yeah, patient. That's why but it's a force. It. It's a force. And let me read this to you from our notes. Patience is a force that undergirds your faith that stands firm until the desired result yeah. is achieved. That's right. If you're walking by faith and you're believing God for that house and it's taking time, the, the faith, the patience will undergird your faith right. and it will keep you. I, I like this. Rick Rayner gave this definition. Patience stays in one spot and does not move. That's right. I refu refuse to move. I refuse to be moved by any other circumstances. We are believing God for our house That's together. Right. And we believe we receive when we pray and we take it we take by faith. It and we keep it. Let and we patience, patience have yeah. her perfect work. Mm -hmm. So you know it's not always good. Sometimes things are instant, but sometimes they're not. Yes, that's right. And when they that's involve right. other people, it's common 
that they're not. Yeah. <laughs> so what yeah. do you do? You don't move. What if it takes you, what if you're believing God for a home and it takes you 10 years mm -hmm. to pay cash for it? Mm -hmm. Well, how long would it take you to pay it off? 40 years. 40 years. So it's still a good deal, you know? I, I mean, it's just, patience is necessary, but we've got it. It's a fruit of the it's reborn It's a fruit human of the reborn spirit, human spirit. Just like love and joy. Love, joy, peace, patience. Goodness, kindness, faithfulness. Gentleness. It's right there, and it will help you produce that house. That's right. And you've said, I've, I've heard you say this in, in meetings before, that faith uh, helps you take it, and patience helps you keep it. That's good. I like that. I'm glad I said that. I you, like that. I'm glad you patience said it. Patience helps you keep it. Patience does not bend or mm -hmm. break, but remains constant and unwavering. You know, people say, well, where's your house? Where's your house? My house is right here. That's right. In my heart and in the, in my heart, in the book and in the, in book, the heart and, it's and gotten in my down mouth. In my heart, Three places. And I can see it. I see it with the eye of yeah, faith. that's right. Boy, there's really something about that, glory. when you can see something with the eye of faith. Mm -hmm. When you can see a ministry like this with the eye of faith, this ministry operates debt-free. Yes. There is no it's debt. Miracle. Uh, on this ministry. They can't, they can't come take it away from you. Can't come take it away That's from right. us. There's no debt here. Why? Because there was a decision of quality that you made in 1967 that we found in That's Romans right. 13, 8, to owe man, no, owe man oh, anything oh, but man. nothing but to love him. And the Amplified Bible says, keep out of debt. That's not clear. I don't know what is. <laughs> <laughs> what's, what, what's, what's not clear about keep out of debt? Yeah, right. And what's not clear about Deuteronomy 28 when it says you'll, you'll not borrow, but you will lend. Yeah. So you stood on that, you believed it, and you began to believe God for a house. And it took time, but you continued to stand on the Word of God. And you stood your ground and you didn't give up. Amen. You didn't quit. And what, it, what I can't think of where this scripture is or what it's talking about, but it, he said, have you lacked anything? Mm-hmm. No, mm -hmm. Lord, we haven't We have lacked not lacked anything. anything. Glory to God. Praise God, we've not lacked Glory anything. Glory to God. You know, it says, we'll just and read this. And no respect for persons. That's right. It'll work. It's worked for you. Yeah. It's worked for me. It'll work for you. That's if right. you dare to walk by faith. Amen. It says in James 1, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith works patience. Mm -hmm. But let patience have her perfect work that you may be perfect and entire, wanting Amen. nothing. That's awesome. In this amplified translation, but let endurance and steadfastness and patience have full play and do a thorough work. A thorough work. So that you may be people perfectly and developedly, de perfectly and fully developed with no defects. Lacking, lacking in, nothing. in nothing. Glory to God. Lacking in nothing. And listen to this. For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow. Yeah, For when your endurance good. is fully developed, you'll be perfect and complete, needing, needing nothing. nothing. Glory needing to God. nothing. Time can be an enemy or an opportunity. That's right. It can be an enemy that causes you to become discouraged and to quit and to give up, or it can become an opportunity to keep building your faith, keep getting stronger and yeah, strong. Yeah. Keep, keep as long as you're... You know, once you climb one mountain <clears throat> and win, and you look out through the valley and say, I'm here. <laughs> It, you have more resolve and more strength to climb the next one because you know it works and you know victory is sweet. And the scripture says this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. And so the end result of standing, you'll be fully developed in your faith, lacking, lacking in nothing. no thing. Glory. Let's do one more scripture, okay, Gloria. Hebrews chapter 10, verses 35 yeah. and 36. Oh, that's a It great says scripture. in the Amplified Bible, do not therefore fling away your fearless confidence. Fearless confidence. For it carries great and glorious compensation of reward. For you ne have need of steadfast patience and endurance so that you may perform and fully accomplish the will of God and yeah. thus receive yeah. and yeah. carry away and enjoy to the full what is promised to you. You know that uh, fully accomplished the, in the will of God and receive and carry away and enjoy the full. That's the blessing. That's the blessing. That's the blessing. That manifest. is the blessing. In every area of your life. Oh my goodness. It's available. It's available. We just have to take it. 
by faith. Let Jesus me read this name. to you. As Terry and I paid for our house, it took four years to move in. And there were times when we got discouraged, but we kept believing, stood our ground, refused to give up and yeah. quit. And we are so thankful, Gloria, that we made that decision. Awesome. We are not paying the interest. You'd we're living in a beautiful paying, home. For it. How many times? Oh, just interest? over and yeah. over and over. And so we have to speak to it. You have to speak continually, speak the word of God. Not and yield. There, Gloria, there's a testimony that we want to show of Joan, Joan Higgins, Higdon, rather, and she stood her ground. This is a woman that went through a tough time, single parent, and single parents, you can live in a debt-free home. That's single right. parents, no matter That's what right. has happened faith in your works. life, faith works. Take a look at this. KCM partner Joan Higdon and her son Drew live happy and blessed lives in the suburbs of Atlanta. But several years ago, as a young mother and as the wife of a youth pastor actively involved in a large church, Joan's world was rocked to the core. When her husband of 12 years suddenly walked away from their marriage and their ministry. I didn't know where I was gonna go. I just lost my job with my church. I'd lost what I thought was my identity as a pastor's wife. That's who I wanted to be. And on top of all that, uh, we had quite a bit of credit card debt. We didn't have anything in savings, uh, and I didn't have a job. I couldn't think a day ahead. I could hardly think a half a day ahead. And I just buried myself in worship. And when I got to my sister's house, um, they lived out in the country. It was a beautiful place. And I would sit out on her back porch and cry and talk with the Lord and bury myself in the Word. The word that Joan had hidden in her heart became her life source. And as she trusted in the Lord, her heart began to heal. Joan and Drew moved into the basement of her in-laws home, and she began to trust God for income and a home of their own. Two years later, as she watched the BVOV broadcast, Joan received clear direction to travel with her son to attend the Southwest Believers Convention for the first time. Within just a few short months, the entire trip was paid in full. And I remember walking into the service on Monday morning that first year and heard Brother Copeland teach on rolling our cares over on him. And my heart was in Super Kid Academy, worried about my son. And I heard the Lord say so clearly, roll him over on me, I'll take care of him. And I did. I enjoyed the services, he did. The Lord just poured into us that year. And that's where I heard the ministers talking about the Lord providing them homes debt free. And I just grabbed a hold of it. I took a stand of faith, told the Lord I was gonna believe him for my house. If he did it for all of them, all these ministers here and other people I was hearing on broadcasts, I knew he would do it for me if I would just take a stand, sow my seed, claim the word on it. And this went on for, I guess, three years. Satan was just constantly talking to me about this. You're being foolish, giving away all your money, you need to save. And I just kept sowing. Every time the Lord gave me an opportunity, I was sowing, and uh, all of my son's needs and mine were met. Joan Higdon is a joyful giver, and as she has tithed and sown faithfully, the Lord has poured out his blessings. Shortly after moving to Georgia, Joan was employed and earning more income than she had ever made in her life. Her training led to a promotion and a new job as a paralegal for a successful law firm. I decided I wanted to keep my Bible open on my desk so that any client that came into my office would know that I'm a Christian, and which would set the platform for me to be able to minister to them. And I'm sharing Jesus with them in probably the darkest hour of their lives. And not only am I sharing Jesus with them, but I'm sharing from a heart of experience. After three years of standing and sewing, the mortgage was paid in full, and Joan and Drew moved into a beautiful home debt-free. I, I don't know how, what Kingdom Words would be to say to this, but I, I was elated, thrilled, over the top, happy. I was living in my dreams. That's what I kept saying. Everything that has been presented to me in the Word as my right, as a child of God, as a covenant believer, has come to pass in my life. Everything. My debt was paid in full, which was impossible in and of itself. I have a home debt free. My son is in private school and he loves the Lord. We have a beautiful family. My family is saved. 
I sit in the stands up there and I think, what a gift this ministry is to my life and to my family. They don't have to hold these meetings, especially and charge nothing, but they do. And because they do, I get to come and enjoy all this. I get to bring my son who's poured into, poured into, poured into, and now has dreams of his own that come out of this ministry and the idea that all things are possible. It's priceless. Just thank God's hand in every area of my life. His word does not fail. And when I'm tempted to think that something's not going to work out, I just remind myself, look what the Lord has done so far. He's never let me down and he's not gonna start now. Gloria, what an amazing testimony that was. Wow. Joan was a single parent and her husband left her. I mean, she, she had to leave the church and then she began to trust God. She wa watched the broadcast. Yeah. She went to the convention. She just kept building the she word. She went in the right direction. She, yes, the exactly. The husband left, but Jesus stayed. Oh, Gloria, that's Glory so good. Glory to God. That is so good. That is so good. Hallelujah. That's the truth. That's right. That is the truth. And there's something about Joan, too, that each one of us need to remember. You know, it's offering day here on the broadcast. We receive an offering on Fridays. And there's something about Joan. She's a, she is a faithful giver, faithful sower. Mm -hmm. And folks, that is a major key. That's right. To, to reaping our harvest. And like you yeah, said the other day. And it shall be given unto you. Exactly. And you said the other day that it's not reaping and sowing. It's sowing and reaping. That's right. It's sowing and reaping. That's and that's right. what she did. That's what so many of our partners did. Partners, we want to thank you. That's what we did. That's, that's what, what you did. That's what Terry did. That's what we are. We are partners with Kenneth Copeland Ministries ourselves. We give on a monthly basis. We give our offerings into the church, into the ministry here. Why is that? We're being fed. Amen. It's changing Praise our lives. God. And there are so many people whose lives have been changed through this ministry, whose lives have been absolutely transformed because of it. And I just want to remind you today, in, in this, this short lesson on giving, folks, do not stop giving. No, do not stop no. sowing seed, whether it's to this ministry, others, or your stop church. Stop speaking. You've got to continue to speak in faith. You've no got to continue. what your circumstances say to you, you say to the circumstances, we have it. We believe yes. we receive yes. it. Yes, yes, yes. Take it. I want to pray for you right now. I want to pray over your finances. Yes. Lord. Pray over your homes. Thank Father, you, in the name of Jesus, I pray over everyone who's watching Lord, this broadcast pray. right now, and I lift them before you. Thank Glory you. and I set ourselves we in agree. covenant agreement yes. with these covenant believers. Thank you. Lord, Jesus. that Miracle. that money is coming to them, provision is yes. coming to them, Thank and you. that you are completely and totally supplying every need that they have according to yes. your riches and glory. Lord, multiply, multiply, multiply. Amen. And I thank you that our God is able to Praise provide you, every grace, earthly blessing and favor to them because they are faithful yeah. givers thank in you. Jesus' name. In the Jesus windows name, of heaven are open and the blessing it. is pouring out. Hallelujah. In Jesus' in name Jesus we pray. Name. Amen. 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 Amen, Gloria. Hallelujah, George. I have so enjoyed being oh, with you. Oh, you're such a blessing. You we, are. We, you build our faith and you encourage us. Well, you are an inspiration to me, to Terry, to our family, Praise and to the family God. of well, Kenneth Copeland Ministries. That. Thank you for having me on with you. And we're believing God for their houses. Amen. We're, we're with them. Houses come to them. Houses in Jesus come name. now. Amen. Jesus name. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise Glory God. Glory to God. Next week, Ken and Keith Butler will be here talking about faith oh, for life. That's good. That's Don't good. Don't miss it. So now we're going to pay cash for a house. Well, whoever does that. I mean, a nice house, a nice house. Just whatever we wanted. That's what we drew it up. We got the price. We said, okay, I'm going to believe God. I'm going to pay cash. Well, it took a little while. But have you ever paid one off? What does it take, 30 years? So what if it took a few years, a year or two, to get one and pay for it? Think about it. How many times would you pay for a house? How many, you know, in that length of time where you could just believe God? See, believe God. Now, what does the Bible say? Think about this. Let patience have 
her perfect work. Partnership is a heart commitment. It's not a way to raise funds. There's no financial requirement to be a partner. Partnership with KCM is designed with you in mind to increase you and build your faith so your needs are met and you can help others. As you partner with us, we will continue to send the gospel out and help teach people how to live in victory. As the Lord Jesus Christ, head of the church, divinely connects us together, he also connects our anointings from him with one another. And every time there's a joint created, that joint that produces supply is increased. Instead of, you know, him asking us for money or begging us for money, or it's, it's completely the opposite. They don't ask you for a commitment. You can be a partner and give when you, what you can when you can. Every power of the Holy Spirit, every mighty gift and weapon is always ready in overflowing proportion. We're following Jesus. But look what's following us. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I dwell in the house of the Lord forever. You're not going to get in the house of the Lord after you die and go to heaven. You're in it now. Amen. We're going to explore that in a few minutes. Hallelujah. We live in a house of blessing. Keep the blessing wall up. Don't talk badness and condemnation. Talk goodness and mercy. Seek first the kingdom of God. After all, that's your house. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord. Your spiritual standing profoundly affects your financial standing. That's why when you get hold of the gospel and begin to prosper spiritually, you can begin to prosper physically and materially as well. You don't have to choose between financial and spiritual prosperity. Both belong to you. Reach out and receive the riches that belong to you. There's no place like home. Home sweet home. Home is where the heart is. Imagine the home of your dreams, a place of your own, debt free. Everyone has that perfect home in mind. And the good news is, your home is part of God's promise of provision to you and your family. The Bible has very specific scriptures about having a good house with beautiful furnishings. You can stand on those scriptures in faith to get the perfect house for you. How to Believe God for a House, a BBOV teaching series on DVD or CD, includes 10 inspiring messages with Gloria Copeland and George Pearsons and a bonus session with George and Terry Pearsons on their personal journey to receiving their home. You'll also receive study notes for all 11 sessions. It's a great way for you and your family to discover God's will about your finances and your dwelling place. Start right where you are and learn how to believe God for your dream house today. Discover God's will about your dwelling place. Order your copy of How to Believe God for a House Package at a discounted price of only $24.99. Go to kcm.org slash TV special, call our toll-free number 1-800-600-7395 or write to us today. Develop in you a strong faith image of God's plan for your house. Believe God's word and stand your ground in faith. For an additional 10% off, order your package online. You know, it's one thing to have your own home, but a home is not a home unless Jesus is the Lord of your life. That's right. That's and the Lord exactly of your heart. Right. You know, to bring love back into a home. That's right. To bring agreement back into a home. I've heard of people before that have been just at odds with each other as a husband and wife, and they came to know Jesus as their Lord and Savior, and it all changed. That's right. Their household changed. That's the most important part of a home. That's the not most, the building. yes. building. Not the building. But the relationship with the Lord. And it's very easy. You know, the Bible tells us in Romans chapter 10, 9 and 10, it says, If you shall confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in your heart 
that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Hallelujah. And with the heart, man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth, yes. confession is made unto salvation. If you've never received Jesus before, I want you to say this after me out loud right now. Say, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. I make Jesus the Lord of my life. I make Jesus the Lord of my life. Jesus, come into my heart. Jesus, come into my heart. Fill my life with your love. Fill my life with your love. And do something with my life. And do something with my life. Thank you for filling me with your Holy Spirit. Thank you for filling me with your Holy Spirit. And I receive a new day. And I receive a new day. As I receive you today. As I receive you today. In Amen. Jesus' name I pray. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Glory Amen. to God. That's what I said to the Lord one day. Now, I didn't know anything. I didn't have any Bible background uh, of revelation anyway. And I said... Lord, take my life and do something with it. That's good. But I never and he dreamed. Did. About what he, he did. did. <laughs> so we want to give you a book if you if you made that decision or if you'd just like to have it, check it out. He did it all for you. It's free. We'll send two brochures on how to study your Bible, and uh, this is a simple way to start reading your Bible. Well, it'll help you get started. This is where freedom. It's the yes. truth that makes you yes. free. So you'll never get into the freedom without the truth. So if you want to, requ uh, if you were born again today and you want to request your free salvation package, go to kcm.org. Or if you're just thinking about it and you want it, go mm -hmm. to kcm.org. We'll send it to you absolutely free. Thank you, partners, for your love and support. Ken and I love you. We appreciate you. We pray for you every day. Glory to God. We have a staff of prayer people here who are available 24 hours a day to pray. We're interested in you. We want to help you. They love you, and they're interested in you. So we want you to just grow up and become greater. Hallelujah. That's what the Lord wants. We want to encourage you to stand strong in faith. There's nothing too big for God. I don't care what's coming against you. God can take care of it if you'll give Him faith to work with. Join us again tomorrow, and remember this. Jesus is Lord. Thank you for joining us today on The Believer's Voice of Victory. To purchase this week's broadcasts on DVD or MP3 on CD, go to our website or call us today. Remember this week's product offer. These ministry tools are designed to help you live a happy and successful life in Christ. Get the Word working in your life and experience all God has for you. If you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior today, be sure to request your free salvation package. This will help you understand who you are in Christ and how to start living in victory. Be sure to request the gift from Kenneth and Gloria Copeland. It is designed to help you grow in the things of God. Receive it and make it a part of your life. God is light and there is no darkness in Him. Come to a Kenneth Copeland Ministries event. Word Explosion, October 10th through 12th with Kenneth Copeland, Bill Winston, and Chaplain A.L. Downing in Columbia, South Carolina. The 2013 Washington, D.C. Victory Campaign, November 14th through 16th with Kenneth and Gloria Copeland at the Hilton Memorial Chapel in Woodbridge, Virginia. The 2014 Branson Victory Campaign, February 27th to March 1st with Kenneth and Gloria Copeland at Faith Life Church in Branson, Missouri. The 2014 Southwest Believers Convention, June 30th through July 5th with Kenneth and Gloria Copeland and their special guests in Fort Worth, Texas.